Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, May 10th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. A few hours ago, we hit G5, Geomagnetic Storm Extreme, for the first time since the great Halloween storm of 2003, we are at KP9. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. So like we said, extreme G5 storm for the first time since the great Halloween storm of 2003 has been reached. G5 geomagnetic storm. These are the potential impacts coming out from the alert uh, here from NOAA. Areas of impact primarily poleward of 40 degrees geomagnetic latitude can, will be affected with widespread voltage control problems. Protective system problems may occur. Some power grid systems may experience component failures or protective device trips resulting in blackouts or disruptions of service. Pipeline currents can reach hundreds of amps. Spacecraft. Systems may experience anomalies that include extensive surface charging, unexpected orientation and altitude changes, uplink download errors, and satellite orbit degradation. Satellite navigation and GPS may be degraded or unavailable for days. And aurora may be seen as low as Florida to South Texas, even Southern Colorado. Here's the current aurora forecast. We can refresh it live. And I'll also show you the KP index is currently hovering at 8.5, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have clear skies like we do right now, but it's forecast to rain all night, unfortunately, get out and look up. We're going to cover this geomagnetic storm in great detail in just a moment. It's official. Yesterday's giant gorilla-sized hailstone in Johnson City is the second largest hailstone verified by the National Weather Service in Texas. The state record remains the Hondo, Texas hailstone here, 6.42 inches in diameter and 1.26 pounds. That's the state record. But yesterday's hailstone, holy macaroni, look at that, 6.25 inches and 0.9 pounds. The second largest hailstone in Texas history. The nexus of the Schmexus. And let's take a look at the hailstorm that produced that stone. Looks like he lost a couple windows there in the hailstorm. And yesterday's hail was everywhere. Take a look. 88,000 impacted by one inch or larger hail. 8,314 impacted by that gorilla hail. The big winner, Texas, right there, probably where that hailstone fell. Thank you, Interactive Hail Maps, for all of your detailed analysis. Six tornadoes touched down in southeast Missouri, According to the National Weather Service, I saw this updated and it is now at seven, I think. Most of them low-level tornadoes, EF1s and EF0s. That's good news uh, because those are smaller and less destructive. Here's the forecast. Monitoring severe weather and flooding concerns for the southeast and Hawaii. Above normal temperatures for the west. Lines of showers and thunderstorms continue for the southeast through today. Some of these storms will be severe with hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. For the mid-Atlantic region and northeast, unsettled and cooler weather patterns through the weekend. For Hawaii, a nearby system will focus showers and thunderstorms containing rainfall and possible flooding. Snow lingers in the Rockies. You could see a few of those severe weather watches still on the map there on North Carolina. Let's take a look at the GFS model here and we'll see that severe weather is gonna move offshore in just about three hours and be over. But by the end of the weekend and the beginning of the week here, we should be seeing more severe weather popping up in the central US. Take a look at total snowfall. Oops, that is the wrong one. Total snowfall here. And we're gonna see that accumulation in the Rockies is gonna continue, especially in Colorado here again and again through the end of May. So that's good news for us in the Southern Mountains here, where it looks like we're going to be picking up at least 16 more inches of the global warming goodness. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. 
Al Gore is not happy about the forecast. Seismic update, no quakes of note, normal activity worldwide. As we turn our attention to Honga, Tonga, Haipei, one of the largest volcanic eruptions ever witnessed and the most unique, this record-shattering Tonga volcanic eruption wasn't triggered by what we thought, according to a new paper coming out. Scientists think the Tonga's record-breaking 2022 eruption was triggered by gas building up to a critical point rather than a reaction between magma and seawater as previously assumed assumed, and as we've told you here on the channel. The paper coming out, I guess just the other day, where is the date? Oh, this is all the way back in the 21st of April. Here, a gas-driven climatic explosion. New evidence-based model for clim climatic 15th January 2020 Hunga Tonga eruption, a gas-solid reaction, choke magmatic gas discharge, internal gas pressure increase, and so on and so forth. And it was the mixing of these gases that caused the thin crust above the volcano to go boom. Good news for those that are living in Grindavik. The Reykjanes volcanic eruption has come to an end after nearly 54 days. And that, unfortunately, doesn't mean it's over. It's just over for now. The amount of magma building in this chamber has already exceeded the threshold for another eruption, which could happen anytime soon. Fuego to 17,000 feet today. Liwotolo to 7,000 feet. Semaru, 15,000 feet. Who knew? Now you do. Sabankaya to 24,000. Fuego to 17. Semaru to 15,000. These are all the reports from today if you are new to the channel. Erta Ale, a new interesting volcano. Look at that. Erta Ale in Ethiopia, another lava sequence in the northern pit crater there. Liwatobi, also puffing to 6,000 feet, Santa Huito to 14, Salancaya to 25,000, Merapi, discrete volcanic ash reported today, Ibu, 18,000 foot puff, Ducono, 7,000 foot puff, Nevado de Cruiz puffing today, and Fuego, 17,000 feet. So that wraps up normal activity for the day. Severe solar storm expected to supercharge northern lights on Friday, and they couldn't be further from the truth. We've hit KP9. We are in G5 extreme geomagnetic storm, which means aurora all the way down to the southern latitudes. If you've got visibility, and it means we could see some infrastructure failure happening. I haven't seen any reports yet, which is good news. The internet has been up all day, and so... Not a lot going on there, but a severe geomagnetic storm continues now. It went from extreme to uh, from severe to extreme uh, in just the last nine hours. So we've been in this high level geomagnetic storm for now nine hours. Take a look at the auroral ova oval. <laughs> the auroras are coming all the way down into Kentucky, looking plucky. They may actually be going further south. This is just a model, but. Make sure to get out and look up. It looks like this geomagnetic storm might be fluctuating soon. Here are some pictures coming out of the aurora from around the world as it is just nightfall in the U.S. Earlier today, we had a level two proton storm that has rapidly ended. We are now going back to baseline and no more proton activity. The magnetometer is still off the charts and it's been that way for about 10 hours. Let me refresh this. It is still going strong. It's actually coming in a little here. I can actually see a peak. It was off the charts for 11 hours, and it is now coming back a little bit. Here you can see that first, I believe, triple cannibalized CME. So this is three CMEs at once coming. And you can see the jump in the telemetry here from about 450 kilometers per second in the plasma speed, jumping all the way up to just below 700 and then now above 700 but dropping back down now. So it looks like this first main section is going to be coming to an end in the next three to six hours. What I mean by that is we'll drop down into G4, G3 storm. And by that time, we've got more CMEs coming and they could kick it back up to KP9. Absolutely amazing sequence of events that we are currently involved in. Severe geomagnetic storm is still likely. S1 radiation event, I told you that has come to an end. And 
Interesting. So the biggest geomagnetic storm in 21 years is ongoing. There are pictures from all around the world. All of the UK got to experience Aurora. May 11th, we are still forecast for KP8 and 9 G5 storm for tomorrow and G2 geomagnetic storm for the 12th. So the next few nights, a lot of Aurora watching uh, ability. And it looks like that active region is rotating around and there's been no more big flares after the huge X 3.9 earlier this morning. Uh, we still have several CMEs to come and hit Earth in the next 24 to 36 hours and we'll be staying in geomagnetic storm for some time. Guys, if you didn't know, I talked to Alex Jones today in his space. It was kind of weird to just be like talking to Alex Jones. Very nice guy, very cordial, and very good manners. So go check it out. I will leave you links below to the Alex Jones space. 40,000 tuned in today, and it was really cool. He was talking about the biggest solar storm on record headed to Earth. I told him that is not the case, but it is a solar storm nonetheless. What else do you see heating stuff up? Uh-oh. Nothing but thermal vents. That's it. Sorry about that. Get your seeds from all heirloom vegetable seeds from the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers and support the channel and the work that we do here. If you're looking for the best open pollinated, cheapest seeds, look at that, two bucks a pack. If you buy more than 25 bucks, shipping's free. Add our coupon code ORP2024, 10% off. It's almost as if the seeds pay for themselves. Now, isn't it? And that's a boom, the knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do and watch all of our podcasts in one place commercial free. And get outside and look up and check out the Aurora. Be safe. We love you. Meow, meow.